boys, once they get to an age, they become starting to become men. They understand their power. They understand their masculinity. They understand that a female presence, a feminine energy is not going to contain them. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. Not in all cases, but in most cases. So that male presence, that masculine energy, it represents that strength. It represents authority. And when you remove a child, especially the boy, away from his father, to where he doesn't respect his father, he's not going to respect any authority. He's not going to respect you, the mother. He's not going to respect his teachers. He's not going to respect his principals. He's not going to respect his boss. He's not going to respect his coaches. He's not going to have any type of respect because that father is there to represent authority. So Deion Sanders, Coach Prime, he goes on the Rich Eisen show. He starts saying some things um, that I guess people have looked at as controversial. Reality is, it's just reality. And he's observing it. And he's talking about it from a perspective of people who are looking to entrust people with positions of leadership and positions of power. In this case, he's a college football coach. Um, he's coaching at University of Colorado now, a Power 5 school, a Division One. One of the bigger universities in in uh, all of college football. Col Colorado used to be a powerhouse back in the day. Hasn't been that great as of late. It's actually been really bad, but he's taking it over. And so he's talking about recruiting. I'm going to play this clip and uh, then I'm going to react to it. Or we have two. different attributes, smart, tough, fast, discipline with character. Yep. We're looking at now, now quarterbacks are different. Yeah. We want mother father you know dual parent mm -hmm. we want that kid to be three five and up because he's got to be smart mm -hmm. um not bad decisions off the field uh, at all mm -hmm. because he has to be a leader of men it's so many different attributes and what we look for when we see a quarterback and you would love a coach's son somewhere that the coach has coached him and i'm not going down my road i see you smiling because well, I, I know i, I know who you're talking I know about, who your quarterback is he's right talking now. About my son. I'm like, <laughs> i didn't just build a template for my son but that's what really we look for and quarterbacks, different positions are different. Like 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 O Lyman, I look for dual parent homes, right. a strong father that they adhere uh, to. Right. Um, smart kid, three at least three three and above. You're also describing Hurts. Yeah. It's tough. Well. I mean uh, physical I mean offensive lineman. Defensive lineman is totally opposite. What do you mean? Single mama. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Trying to get it. <laughs> uh, he's on free lunch. I mean, like, uh, uh, I mean, I'm talking about just trying to make it. He's trying to rescue mama. Like, mama barely made the flight. Trying to get out the mud. And I want him to just go get it. I, I, it's a whole different yeah. attributes that you look for in different positions. And we have that stuff just chronicle. We know what we want and we go get it. Deion Sanders here on The Richard. So as you can see, it triggers a lot of people because he's talking about the position of quarterback. And he's saying in the position of quarterback, we're looking for kids from a two-parent household. Why is this controversial? Because we've been fed this narrative that you don't need two parents. You don't need a mother and a father. You can get by with just a mother. You can get by with uh Two mothers, you can get by with two fathers. You can get by with anything except the traditional nuclear family of a mother and a father. The only combination that can produce life. Again, this is an agenda to keep humanity from progressing. Like the so-called progressives that always put forth this progressive policy and they have these progressive ideologies. They're anything but. They can't even progress us into the next generation. Progress comes when you are able to leave a legacy and a better legacy than the, than, than the one that you had. You have to have children. You have to have the next generation. You actually have to produce that. You actually have to commit the physical act that produces life. And that can only be done with a mother and a father, a man and a woman. And here's Deion Sanders. NFL Hall of Famer, one of the best players to ever play the game, he understands talent and he understands that if I'm going to entrust an individual with my program, a multi-million dollar enterprise, then he must be a good decision maker. He must have 
a, a good foundation. He must be able to make the right decisions, the right choices. He has to be smart. He has to be intelligent. And a lot of that comes from people in two-parent households. Now, that doesn't mean not everybody, right? Obviously, there are people from single-parent households that are great leaders as well. But there's something about a child, especially a boy, when he's growing up with his father and he can see a strong male presence. It represents authority. He even says an old lineman, right? He went offensive lineman, two-parent household. He wants to have that type of um, authority that he's a, a, adhered to, right? See, this is one thing that we do when we say with, you know, these women out here with this feminist stuff, they say that they don't need men. You know, Lil Jr. doesn't need his father. I'll be his mother and his father, right? This is what the the um, women's empowerment crowd says, right? But you don't understand what you're doing here. Look, boys, once they get to an age, they become starting to become men. They understand their power. They understand their masculinity. They understand that a female presence, a feminine energy is not going to contain them. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work that way. Not in all cases, but in most cases. So that male presence, that masculine energy, it represents that strength. It represents authority. And when you remove a child, especially the boy, away from his father, to where he doesn't respect his father, he's not going to respect any authority. He's not going to respect you, the mother. He's not going to respect his teachers. He's not going to respect his principals. He's not going to respect his boss. He's not going to respect his coaches. He's not going to have any type of respect. Because that father is there to represent authority. I'm sorry. There are just certain things that these so-called experts and these academics and these celebrities and these social justice warriors and all these people who come together and fight, a.k.a. grift, off of these movements that they just can't get away from reality. Men are men and women are women. Fathers are fathers and mothers are mothers. We have a specific role to play. And when we get outside of that role, then we see chaos. What he said is absolutely right. You want a child, you you want a recruit, if somebody who's going to put in your that your your program, something that you've built or are building in his case, you want it in the hands of somebody that has a strong foundation. Look, there's 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 a difference. There's a difference. Look, as 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 me being 39 years old, a married man, a husband. I see things way different than, than a single man. I think a married woman sees things different than a single woman. I think the two of them, we don't really co co coalesce like that. Right? A single man that is out there that maybe he's got a, some ba baby mamas and he's running around on the streets and he's with this girl dating this girl. I, it's hard for me to sit here and say, I, you know, it's interesting. I'll give you an example here, right? To just to kind of make my point. Um, my 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 father a while ago, he was doing some work with somebody, and this guy was like, you know, he had a little bit of money, so he was like, oh, we're gonna make money, we're gonna do this, we do that, da, 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 all these different things. I remember talking to my mom about it because I knew the guy, right? This is my friend. I grew up with him, right? He has money now or, you know, anyways. And so my mom said, you know, if he was a family man, meaning if he was married, because I believe he has two kids um, with a woman that he was never married to. And I don't think they're still they're together anymore. But she was saying if he was a family man and then he was known for cheating on her and all these other stuff, right? She, she said, if he was a family man, I would trust it more. I would believe it more. And I thought to myself, I said, man, that, that, that's kind of interesting. Why is it that a man who has a family, a man who is committed to the woman that he has kids with in a marriage, right? And this is where all the, you know, the red pill people don't like to talk about this. And I understand that they're the gripes when it comes to marriage and how it's, in, you know, in the imbalances with it when it comes to men and women. But at the end of the day, it's not about that part. It's not about the legalities. What it's about is the commitment that you make to that woman. 
the commitment that you bring to the table and say, this is my commitment. I'm committed to you. I'm committed to the children that we're going to have. I'm committed all the way. Everything that I'm doing is for you. There's no more party time. There's no more, oh, I'm just hanging out with the boys time. It's not all that stuff is done. And I'm not saying you can't have friends and I'm not saying you can't. But what I'm saying is your commitment, your priority is to your family. Speaks volumes. It really does. It shows that you have more to lose. It shows that you have more on the line. And it's so hard to deal with people that don't have that same, haven't made that same commitment, aren't in that same relationship, don't have that same bond that you have with, with your partner, with your with your wife, right? Let me let me not say partner because that could be confused, but with your wife, it's very different. I have a wife. You know, I told the story the other day uh, on, on another video about doing jujitsu, and I said, I just can't do it. I can't afford to break my arm because I need to work. And as much as I would love to do it, there's somebody else that depends on me. And she comes first. That's just what it is. I mean, so when you have that and you grow up in that type of household, it it's a pattern has been set. And now that young man can see that pattern has been set. He sees his father that is committed to his mother, that they're committed to the family. And that he takes those he takes on those same attributes. That's a person you want leading your team. You don't want somebody who didn't see that. You don't want somebody who's seen flakiness his whole life, who's seen, you know, disloyalty, indecisiveness. He's a quarterback. He has to be decisive. <laughs> He's got to know when to make that throw. He can't be hesitant. So what he's saying is true. We just don't want to recognize these things because we're bombarded with narratives. Narratives that tell you don't say that. That's not right to say. Single moms can do it too. I'm not saying they can't. Look, I read a book a long time ago on, ironically, it was about the, this is what kind of opened my eyes to this thing, right? It was about the Biggie and Tupac murders, right? So I'm watching, I'm reading this book and there was part in there with Suge Knight and he was talking about like Snoop Dogg and all these other guys that used to work with him. And he said, you know, these guys wouldn't they they didn't have no fathers they weren't raised by men so we can't really relate on how we do things together and he was kind of like you know <clears throat> it was a diss you know kind of a slight at them but i thought about that i thought that's interesting they didn't have no fathers hmm now when i was growing up i had a father like my dad was around my dad coached my dad was very much involved right so you know everything every time i um you know, all my friends and whatnot, they didn't, they, most of them didn't have either. They didn't have their fathers or they were from a divorced family. So I was just kind of like, well, what's the difference here? Well, I didn't really notice it until years later. You know, I went to the, to prison, um, the choices I made, obviously, but I would always ask people that I would be cool with or, you know, I lived in a cell with, I would say, like, who raised you? And I could always tell the difference between the person that was raised by the single mother and the person that was raised with his father in the house, had a good relationship with his father. It's much different. There was more boundaries with that person. There was more structure with that person. They were more willing, they, they were more likely to listen to their elders, to respect their elders. They were more likely to um, adhere to a program that existed outside of themselves, right? They stood for something. Now, I'm not saying you can't if you come from a single mother household. None of this is saying that. But I'm just saying in, there are just certain things, certain generalities that are just true. They're just true. Doesn't mean you can't overcome them, but they're just true. This is why it's so important to have the nuclear family. This is why it's so important to have homes with mothers and fathers. I know you don't want to hear it. I know people don't want to hear it, but this is this is a reality. And we can't ever get things together until people start to understand that and realize that. That we need mothers and fathers, biological males with biological females, and that's a family. And they're committed to each other. You're not running around on the streets. You're not men messing with different women. 
You're not trying to be an independent woman. You're not trying to get it out on your own. And you don't need no man. And he don't need no woman. And yada, 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 and all these different things. No, we need to get back to what is reality. What is the best way for us to create a better reality? And that's to be together, man and woman, creating families, strong families, teaching morals, teaching values, showing people the right way to the next generation. It's really that simple, man. This is not difficult. This war isn't going to be fought with bullets and bombs and guns and all these different things. They're really just fought in that manner. Who has the best morals? And what he's saying here is true. You want to raise leaders. You want to entrust somebody. I want to know that you come from a background, that you understand that, and you've been given that guidance, and you've been given that kind of game to be able to do so. And that comes from strong families.